everybody to our North America Connectathon 2024 Town Hall. We are very excited to have you join us today um, as we launch the 2024 Connectathon. Um, can we move to the next slide, please? Couple housekeeping items. Again, thank you for joining today. This webinar is being recorded. Uh, we invite you to put questions in the chat using the Zoom chat feature, and we will be monitoring the questions throughout the webinar, but holding until the end during our Q&A session. Thank you. I am excited to quickly introduce our IAG Connectathon support team for this year's um, 2024 North America Connectathon. Hello, my name is Christina Caraballo. I am the Vice President of Informatics at HIMSS and IAG USA President. With that, if we could just go down the list so everybody could hear names, voices, and see faces, starting with Chris with quick introductions. Hi, yeah, I'm Chris Carr, Director of Informatics for the Radiological Society of North America, and I'm the Secretary of the IHE International Board, and I'm also a Vice President on the IHE USA Board. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm not sure if we have Els or Ariana on the call this morning. Um, so yes, maybe- Yes, I'm here, I'm Ariana. Oh, there you are. Welcome, Mariana. I'm Mariana Coquilla. I'm Connected to Manager, and I work for uh, IHC Catalyst. Thank you, Ariana. Emily, could you say hi? Of course. Hi, everyone. Uh, familiar with a lot of the names, but uh, my name is Emily Lemus. I am an informatics specialist at HIMSS, but I do overall support for the IHC North America Connectathon. Thank you. And Daniel. So Daniel Berzano, I am the Gazelle product manager, and I'll be also uh, helping out as a technical uh, project manager for the Connectathon in North America, and uh, really happy to see a lot of uh, old friends on this call. Excellent. Thank you to the team and the amazing support we have seen throughout the IAG community to help bring us the North America Connectathon um, that we are excited to share with you um, today. With that, let's move to the agenda. Um, we're going to give a quick overview of IHG, recognizing that we do see some new faces. Welcome. Um, we're a very lovely community. I'm happy to see both new and old faces here today. Um, we're going to go over the Connectathon testing, um, how the registration process is going to work this year, and then go over any questions that anyone may have. Um, so with that, what is IHG? Uh, longhand, integrating the healthcare enterprise is an international health IT standards development and testing organization. It was founded by RSNA and HIMSS in 1997 uh, to develop and publish standard-based implementation guides, which we call profiles. Um, I'm very excited to share that 2024 marks our 25th year of providing excellent testing and implementation, implementation services around the, goal, the globe. Um, our vision is to enable seamless and secure access to information whenever and wherever it is needed with a mission to improve the healthcare by specifications, tools, and services for interoperability. Through our relationships built on trust, dedication, and collaboration of this shared vision, Together, we have helped create a foundation for interoperability across the globe. We are really excited to work with our community as we continue to bring healthcare into the future, as we modernize and um, continue to support interoperability initiatives. With that, I am going to press it off to Chris Carr to go a little bit into more about what the Connectathon is. Thanks, Christina. Um, as we've said, uh, many familiar names on the call, so uh, I'm sure that this is familiar information to many, many of you, but uh, not all, some uh, new names as well. So um, an IEG Connectathon, um, and I'll just say, you know, IEG 
uses the term Connectathon in a specific way. Uh, we didn't invent the term, and there are other organizations that use it. But for IHE, a Connectathon is an organized, monitored testing event um, supported by a suite of uh, testing tools. Um, it is intended to provide an environment for developers of HIT products to test and debug and refine their implementations uh, in a way that enables them to adopt standards-based interoperability uh, in an efficient and rapid way. Um, and there has been a long series, long history of events, uh, IEG Connectons in Asia, Europe, and North America, going back to 1999, actually. So, the next slide, please. Um, the benefits of testing at a Connectathon, um, you know, the essential one is to be able to uh, test your capacity for exchanging information with other systems, um, with your industry peers, systems that you encounter in the field, um, in a structured and supervised peer-to-peer -peer testing environment. Uh, Connectathons provide detailed validation of the interoperability capabilities and of your system's conformance with IEG profiles. Uh, they also give a feedback loop for uh, profiles and um, the outcomes uh, and you know defects in the profiles, gaps um, are fed back to the committees that manage those documents. Um, but the essential thing is that, that the Connectathon is a testing and debugging environment that helps remove barriers to interoperability that you would otherwise encounter at uh, sites in the field. Um, and uh, the successful outcomes of testing at Connectathons are published in a, a matrix, the, the Connectathon results database uh, that you can use as evidence of your product's uh, interoperability capabilities. Next slide, please. Um, IHE fits in this general testing continuum. The IHE Connectathon fits um, kind of right squarely in the middle. So on the left, um, there are other events, some called Connectathons. It, many of you, I think, are familiar with the HL7 Fire Connectathons, which are vigorous, and, you know, uh, well attended events that. Um, provide uh, a kind of early implementation experience for um, adoption of the emerging fire specifications. IHE does similar things, sometimes in association with connectathons that we call plugathons that are really more in the nature of um, spec test and early prototyping. Connectathons are more um, really in the conformity assessment um, realm of testing. Um, uh, they um, feed results that can be, uh, you know, as I mentioned, um, shared with uh, purchasers and implementers of systems. Um, the results of Connectathons also feed into the IG conformity assessment program um, and are used by what we call projectathons which are events um, typically put on by um, health authorities, e-health initiatives um, that may use IEG specifications, IEG profiles as a foundation for testing and then layer on additional requirements. Um, IEG Connectathon results are also uh, used in product labeling in a way that I'll mention in, in a couple minutes, actually in innovation in this year's Connectathons. Um, but they are, again, kind of right at the heart of a continuum of testing. Next slide, please. Um, and 2023 was a, a very good year internationally, a busy year for IHE testing events. Um, as you see here, there were events actually on four continents, three um, Connectathons in North America, Europe, and Japan, and a series of projectathons um, uh, across the world. Next slide, please. 
So um, just to kind of reiterate, why should you participate? Well, uh, the foundational thing is to be able to test the interoper interoperability capabilities of your systems and products with industry peers. Um, and that should enable you to enhance the quality and interoperability of those products um, and reduce development costs and the time and time to market. Um, there's also, you know, a kind of public facing element to this. Um, it's, it's good to be a good citizen. It's also good to be seen as a good citizen. Um, and the connect funds are an opportunity to demonstrate your commitment to interoperability. Um, and to prepare for public events like the demonstrations at the HIMSS conference, the Interoperability Showcase, um, the RSNA conference, there is a, a demo called Imaging AI in Practice um, that uh, is heavily uh, based on IEG. And, um, and there are others as well um, in Europe and Japan and elsewhere. And again, um, the successful testing results are recorded in a public database, the Connect Fund Results database. And um, you can refer to those um, in communications with potential customers and others. Next slide, please. This year, there's an additional incentive for participation. Um, and that is the Connectathon seal. So um, this is a, an innovation that was introduced by IEG Japan and now has been adopted by IEG internationally. Um, and uh, this is the ability to use a seal in your products and product marketing materials that indicates um, what IEG capabilities you have successfully demonstrated at Connectathon. Um, and includes a link back via the QR code to um, you know, a, a public evidence of that result. Uh, and just to note here that um, this is a new pro program and um, that part of the registration process will be to indicate your interest in participating in the Connect on SEAL program, um, which has some uh, additional kind of restrictions, privacy rules associated with uh, how that information is tracked. Next slide, please. Um, so registration this year is um, a three-step process. There is a form, a pre-registration form, which is linked here and we've distributed it and we'll distribute it again. Um, and we need input on this form very quickly. Um, the uh, deadline is this Friday. And the purpose of this pre-registration okay. form is to help us organize prospective testing partners. So um, we request that you indicate the areas of interest for testing, and that will help us really initiate the, um, the process of planning and also the conversation with vendors who are signing up for, for uh, testing uh, in order to organize the testing as efficiently as we can. Um, the actual registration link, um, the, the form that links, uh, that kind of, you know, includes the contract and um, the link to our Gazelle test management system where um, uh, you will indicate the details of your um, desired testing. That opens um, on the 11th, so next Monday. And our window for registration is very tight. Um, unfortunately, the, the lead time for the event and holidays and so forth um, kind of dictate that we need to get um, the registration information aligned as uh, quickly as we can and before, uh, and really to have your input before the holidays. Um, so it's open for 10 days and closes on the 21st. Um, there will be some period of kind of back and forthing with registrants um, and organizing um, groups, testing groups, uh, you know, groups of testing partners um, 
and uh, and then your commitment, final commitment and registration payment is uh, due in January. Next slide. Um, the, this event will be an in-person testing event. It'll be held at RSNA's headquarters, um, which as someone has already mentioned was the site of the original IEG Connectathon way back in 1999. This time, I'm happy to say you won't be in the parking garage uh, where the original event was held, but in our conference facility, um, which is uh, quite nice, uh, comfortable facility, much better than the concrete uh, of the parking garage. Um, but the downside of it is that it uh, has limited capacity. Um, and that really limits the event here to uh, approximately 25 systems. So um, our ability to assemble critical mass of testing partners um, will determine which domains and profiles are tested at this event. Um, the early signup again is critical for enabling uh, our managers Daniel and his team to assemble effective test groupings. Next slide. Um, the fees for the event are, we've kind of simplified our fee structure and um, the fee is $7,000 per system tested. Um, and, you know, participants can test multiple profiles across multiple domains on a single system. There is a kind of logical limit to this, a practical limit. Um, you know, the Swiss Army effect. Uh, actually, um, you know, there's a point at which um, a, a system has to kind of be broken into components, uh, and, and that is really where it becomes impractical to test and and um, uh, where you would be really a, a kind of a, a bottleneck for potential testing partners because you have too many things going at once. So there is a, a certain amount of judgment involved in determining what constitutes a system. But, um, you know, we think after this many years of experience, we kind of know one when we see one. Um, that fee will get you, you know, the space, which is a, a you know, a nice comfortable table and chairs. Um, and the comfort is important for uh, chairs that you'll be using for a week of testing. Um, meals are included for two participants. Um, and of course, it gives you access to all the required testing tools and support from uh, staff for administration and logistics through, um, you know, from registration through completion of testing um, and technical support in the test plans and matching with partners in results monitoring and, you know, some degree of direction. Um, and uh, that's all part of the package. With that, I think I will turn over to Daniel Berziano, who can say a little bit more about the profile selection and organization of the testing process. Daniel, you're muted. There we go. Is this better? So, um... Testing peer-to-peer -peer is fun when you have partners. So the ability to find and tune the right profiles is uh, crucial. So that's why we're doing um, with the pre-registration. We asked you for your interest in the different profiles. And now um, we're talking about this. So we're looking to figure out which are the most uh interesting profiles to be tested, whether you want to test some of the novel profiles that are just coming out that are really um, in their uh, emerging state, or if you're still looking to test some of the more mature uh, established profiles and finding out who wants to attend the Connectathon so that we're able to have matches for profiles and actors that are suitable for all of you. Um, so we, we want to, of course, open the discussion. Um, uh, we've started uh, creating uh, lists based on the pre-registration, and we're cross-matching uh, participants to per perhaps propose some of these profiles. 
And then, um, of course, we will have uh, open discussion with uh, all of you that are interested. In uh, you can contact me by email, and uh, I will also uh, be reaching out to you to make sure that we are uh, aligned on what is most relevant, and interesting, and gives you the best uh, value for your testing. Oh, right. Okay. So this is based on the pre-registration uh, forum. Um, we, we see that there's a lot of interest in ITI profiles as well as device profiles, but radiology uh, is also uh, very uh, active and, and lots of interest there. Uh, some interest in QORF and PCC as well. So um, ideally we can host uh, testing events for, for, all of these, uh, I think Quarf here would need a couple more participants to have good coverage, uh, but uh, maybe we can also uh, be, uh, I would say, think outside the box to, to help bring partners um, that might be um, interested in complementing the uh, current uh, actors that want to be tested. Let me go to the next slide. Oh, I think. This is, is this still me or? Yeah, um, sure. Or, well, I'm happy to take it as well, Daniel. I mean, it's just that this is the timeline. We've already touched on the high points here. Um, and uh, just so you've got it in one consolidated table. Likewise, these are just links to um, resources that have already been mentioned elsewhere in their presentations. And again, context for um, questions, follow up. I think the um, contract related questions, the primary address there is the IEG Catalyst, office at IEG Catalyst. Um, for logistics and registrations, you can use the connectthon at IG.net address, and that will go to several of us who can kind of root your questions or, or answer them directly. And now it's time for questions. So, um, and I see there are a few in the chat. I can um, start, um, Brian, asks of, about uh, the option of having additional uh, supporting people for per system. And I, I think we'd have to consider those requests on a kind of case by case basis uh, with a uh, just justification. Um, there's just, you know, the physical space limitations make it difficult. I think we can accommodate, you know, uh, a few extras in the room as needed. Um, but uh, we, I, I, we can't extend a kind of blanket um, uh, uh, welcome of additional participants per system. Um, Pre-registration, I'll keep going on the questions and, and um, Christina and Daniel, if there's questions here you wanna jump in on, please, well, uh, you're more than welcome. Um, Pre-registration is not, uh, considered a commitment. And um, th the uh, profiles that will actually be tested um, will be based on final registra registration, um, but the pre-registration should give us um, the, you know, a, a good foundation for um, being able to confidently say which ones will be offered for testing. Um, there, Dan, to your question, um, be, to your two questions, the, um, the per system in, in the past, um, you know, when we have had broader capacity, we have had a discount for additional systems, companies bringing more than one system. This year, uh, because of the premium on space, and uh, uh, we just have the single um, per system cost. Um, and with regard to the 
L information, we will provide that shortly. This week, we'll provide um, uh, to this list and everyone who's indicated interest um, a list of hotels in the, you know, directly proximate to the RSNA headquarters where the event will be held. Yes, and to, to John's point, um, yeah, opening up the parking garage. Uh, I wish it were, in some ways, I wish it were an option, but I, um, I'm afraid it's not this year. Um, and and Vasil, unfortunately, you know, again, we aren't able to provide that, um, to use that space in the parking garage. It's uh, the, um, the prepper, you know, the way we, um, organize the space and added electri electrical service and so forth to make that possible. Um, those changes have unfortunately been uh, kind of undone over the years, so it's not available. Nostalgia really wants the parking garage back. I know it's uh, a lot of people have fond memories. Um, but I, they oh, forget yeah. that this event will be in, in February, which might kind of change their perspective a little. Um, let's see, looking down the list of questions, can participants in one system join in another system on different days? That, you know, um, Edward, your question about organizing testing, uh, rotating across different days, um, something we've touched on a little bit. It, I think there are, are kind of significant logistical issues associated with that. Um, I, I'll just say generally that, um, you know, we are gonna organize the testing here to accommodate as many um, participants as we can. Um, and that we will um, try to provide additional venues. Um, there is an, an IG Europe Connectathon, for example, coming up in June. Um, but additional venues for testing uh, needs demand that we can't meet with this event. Um, the question um, that Eldon poses, uh, Daniel, I'm not sure, will we be able to um, expose the pre-registrants to other pre-registrants? It's kind of a policy question and one I'm not, I don't know that I um, can answer. All right, so um, Eldon, we'll, I'll take that question back and we'll have to um, provide a response to the group as to um, whether that's workable to, to um, communicate the pre-registrants to others in the group. Um, Lisa, your question, um, the, the SEAL, um, Connectathon SEAL is, in title, it is intended to give you a way of communicating to the world, to potential customers and others, um, that you have tested um, capabilities at Connectathon that are included in a product that you are offering. So it's, um, you know, it's like seals you get on the back of your computer and other places that just um, are at least an implied mark of the capabilities that your, your product has. Does that answer your question or do you, um, we can provide more detail about the outlines of the on seal program um, to you, but it, hopefully that's somewhat helpful. Thank you. 
um, profile actor names. Yeah, Monroe, that's a very good suggestion um, about being able to, to um, kind of provide a running tally of what um, uh, the indications of interest. So uh, another level of detail beyond the kind of pie chart that Daniel showed earlier, um, which was really just focused on domains that showed um, you know, what we've received so far in the pre-registration forms. So that's definitely a point we'll take back and, and, and try to figure out how, how we can uh, communicate that as this registration is in progress. And Tim, to your point, yes, um, again, I thank you for emphasizing that, that early registration is really critical for us in, in planning this. Any other questions or comments? So oh, there's another one. Thank you, Brian. Um, yes, uh, to your question, Brian, we will take the chat um, and uh, maybe edit it a bit for conciseness and clarity um, and provide responses back to the group. Um, Dalibor, uh, to your question, I, I uh, tried to answer this earlier um, the best we can. Um, there is likely to be excess demand or demand for testing at this event that we aren't able to meet because of the space limitations. Um, and our um, intent will be to use that input and to communicate with those whose, uh, whose needs we're not able to meet um, about other testing opportunities that IEG can provide uh, this year, including, as I mentioned, um, a Connectathon is coming up in, in Italy, IEG Europe Connectathon in June. So um, I think that's the best response we can provide at this point. Um, John's question about um, participation in the showcase. Uh, Christina, I think I would defer to you on that question. For the showcase, the participation in a, this Connectathon is not necessarily required, but proving testing of some sort is required to participate in the interoperability showcase. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions on that on an individual basis um, based on what you're looking to showcase um, and what you have tested already. Any other questions? You can put them in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and uh, be nice to hear voices. Oh, I see um, John Gargiulo. Um, with regard to test monitoring and, and monitors, um, Daniel, do you have any comments currently about our the need for monitors at the event? Uh, yes, there's absolutely the need for monitors. We haven't done the um, call for monitors officially yet. I think it's going to go through the um, traditional Zoho um, channels. Uh, it should be done shortly. Um, so yes, we're, we're going to be looking for monitors. You're more than welcome to join us. Okay, so John will um, have an opportunity to volunteer or volun volunteer people. Um, 
And as far as the main leads, um, uh, Brian, um, Daniel will be the initial technical project lead. Daniel, is that accurate to say? Um, yeah, that's accurate. And for logistics, um, Emily Lemus from HIMS will be the point of contact, but uh, there will be um, support from RSNA staff and others as well. Um, but uh, Daniel will be the point of contact um, and the, the lead on the technical project team. Uh, Phil, thanks for uh, putting in that detailed information about the showcase requirements. Okay, a last call for additional questions. Um, Keith raised the question of virtual attendee options. Um, I would say that we're keeping the door to that open a crack, um, but that our preference, um, given past experience, uh, the in-person testing has been much more efficient. Um, I think the remote testing experience for um, participants in our hybrid events, which we've done a couple of now, um, has been less than optimal. I think they, it, the coordination of act activities between the in-person participants and remote participants has been difficult to manage. Um, so uh, we're looking at that um, possibility of um, having some remote support. I think there's, uh, you know, there's possibilities there, but um, having a separate category of remote per testing participants, I think we would prefer to avoid um, uh, as much as possible. Yep. And the, the main takeaway, I, I hope that the community is hearing is that, you know, we were asked for a connect-a-thon and we're, we're bringing this connect-a-thon to the RSNA with limited sp space. Um, we're really hoping to get a, a very good sense very quickly of, of what testing needs are. And then we want to work with the community to make sure we fit those needs, especially as, as they arise. So the, the best way to go about this is to communicate with us. Um, and we want to create a really amazing experience and also have flexibility to meet the needs of our community with the limited space we have. So we are kind of hoping for the in-person full experience. We are open should it um, different needs and for us to be creative arise. So again, just please communicate to us and we're going to work with you as best as we can um, to make sure that everybody's needs are met to the best of our capability. Great. Yep. Thanks, Christina. Um, and uh, I see one last question um, from Mark Woodruff about attending for to observe. Um, we have um, in the past had kind of Connectathon tours and other, you know, a conference event associated with Connectathons. We intend to do a conference, but it'll be kind of smaller scale again, um, owing to the, um, the space restrictions of using the RSNA headquarters as the site. Um, so there will not be, um, a, you know, general, um, opportunity for non-participants to attend. Um, and we will, Dan, um, provide, uh, you know, adequate, um, network support for both on-site and, um, it, for, uh, um, participants who are connecting to cloud-based services. Uh, 
Um, there is not an additional cost of uh, that 7,000 per person includes um, the registrants, uh, a, a, includes meals uh, to Dalibor's question. There is not a separate per registrant fee as we um, assessed in some previous connect funds. Okay, um, I see the chat is kind of quiet at the moment. If there are additional questions, please reach out to us. The connectathon at IEG.net address is kind of the general one to use. It will uh, enable us to route your questions to the appropriate uh, respondent. Um, and again, please fill out the pre-registration form as at your earliest convenience, if at all possible, by Friday. Um, and we look forward to dialoguing with you and with um, working with as many uh, as you have, as we can possibly accommodate. Um, and uh, again, thank you for your interest and for your time this morning. I look forward to working with you.